please welcome Split co-founder and president, Trevor Stewart. Welcome to Flagship, everyone. I'm thrilled to get this group together to share what we've been up to lately at Split and what we'll be doing next. I have to tell you, I'd much rather be having this conversation in person, but since we can't be together, we've built a show that we're convinced will be memorable. I personally just got my hair cut for the first time in 12 months just for all of you. When I think back on starting Split six years ago, I'm consistently humbled by this journey, and I feel that way even more today. My co-founders and I had an idea, but without every teammate at Split and each of you listening in, we wouldn't have the company we have today. Thank you for either using our platform or for simply taking the time to learn more about our mission and our product. It's great to see so many of you interested in the problems we set out to solve from our first office, Pato's apartment here in Redwood City, California. I have a lot I want to show you in the next 45 minutes. We'll talk through the features we're releasing throughout the next nine months and dive in on where we're headed as a company. At the end of this session, I'm hoping you have a good sense of what you'll be seeing in Split before the end of this year. If not, find me in Slack and tell me what I've missed. Before I show you where we're going, I want to recap 2020. You already heard Brian share some of this, but last year, alongside everything else happening in the world, we recognized that digital transformation was no longer enough and that seamless digital customer experiences have become table stakes. Many of you attending this conference found your product development roadmaps radically altered in early 2020 as you shifted to make the digital experience of your customers the paramount user journey. This resulted in the explosion in the adoption of feature flags, doubling the number of flag evaluations we served in a three-month period. Still, Split was able to meet growth with growth, releasing more than 20 customer-facing features. Let's talk through some of these rollouts. In January, we partnered with the team at mParticle to deliver a bi-directional integration, making it simpler to both send Split impressions to mParticle and mParticle events to Split. Customer data platforms became even more mainstream in 2020 and continue to be a powerful solution to quickly send and receive data from Split and accelerate your time to value. In February, we introduced support for both React and Redux SDKs, expanding our SDK coverage, making the front-end community even happier. In March, we introduced an industry-first change management process. With approval flows, your team can get Split changes reviewed before they take effect. The feedback from all of you on this feature has been great. Your teams have the requirement to log these changes, but the desire to automate these approvals. We're listening and are working with partners to streamline this for you. In April, we released a bi-directional Google Analytics integration. This integration makes it simpler for the 29 million plus websites that rely on Google Analytics to send and receive data from Split. Small legal disclaimer, not all 29 million use Split. In May, we made it even easier for your teams to manage outstanding change requests with the addition of the My Work page in Split, as well as the addition of approval API endpoints. In June, we added onto the work we released in March with more support for customers who require a deeper level of control, allowing customers to configure their organization settings to require approvals in an environment. In July, we released a new Data Hub view in Split. This Data Hub became the home to our Live Tail feature, which enables you to see impressions and events in near real time as they flow both in and out of Split. This was a big architectural change here at Split. As many of you noticed, it took several minutes for data to show up previously in our web console after a feature flag had been evaluated. The live tail functionality was built from the ground up to show impressions in Split within seconds. Nearly a quarter of you use this querying capability each month to validate your feature flag evaluations and debug as needed. In August, we introduced the ability to filter splits at the SDK level, so your SDKs only download those splits they need to operate. This has reduced the burden of downloading splits to the client that may only be evaluated server-side. We also introduced more advanced statistical testing with Welch's t-test. This makes results even more accurate in cases where there is both a difference between the variances of the samples and an unequal rollout plan, like 5% on and 95% off. As you might suspect, this happens often. 46% of all percentage rollouts in Split have an unequal distribution. In September, we added the ability to export CSV data from Split. This feature has been used by more than 50% of you since launching. It's an incredibly powerful way to get your data out of Split and validate, debug, or backfill your data warehouses. Spoiler alert, we got more export capabilities to show you in just a few minutes. 
In October, we release multiple comparison corrections to control for false discovery rate. This gives teams more confidence that the statistically significant metrics and split reflect meaningfully detected impacts. In November, we continued our investments in security and logging by introducing admin audit logs, logging all admin activities in Split's web console. Similar to our other audit logging capabilities, we provided a simple webhook to send and store these logs for reporting and compliance purposes. And finally, in December, we introduced a bi-directional S3 integration to send and receive data from Split. And I'm particularly proud of the team on this one because we all know how easy it is to work with S3. It was great to roll these features out, watch you all adopt them, and then hear back about the results. Some of you have told us you've been able to achieve a 95% decrease in engineering time per release. Others have been able to deploy four times more features, have your incident response time, and increase overall site conversions. These are awesome stories to hear, and there's more to come. As we look forward, I wanted to start by announcing a few changes to our free edition. At the beginning of 2019, Split announced a new free offering. This offering allowed teams to use Split for unlimited feature flags, unlimited environments, unlimited segments, and most importantly, unlimited MTKs. Put simply, we wanted any team of any scale to be able to use Split. This was a fun moment for me as a co-founder. We were able to offer the basic feature flagging functionality of Split to any developer on any team for free. This is tooling that our team has built many times at many companies before Split, and we get the pain of hand-rolling feature flags. Since that announcement, hundreds of teams across the world, many of you watching this presentation, continue to use Split's free offering. Thank you. Today, we're announcing that our free edition includes both API access and audit logging. If you can do it in the product, you can now do it via API. And there's more. Also included in our free edition, you'll find access to all our developer integrations. This includes our existing integrations with Datadog, New Relic, AppDynamics, Rollbar, Slack, Sumo Logic, and others, as well as several new integrations you will see today. To help teams continue to leverage these and other capabilities, we're also announcing a developer efficiency suite, which includes a metrics reference library and split CLI. With the split CLI and completely from the command line, you can get started with split in under five minutes. Our CLI allows you to issue a single command to create a new split account create a split with rules, and download a working example in the programming language of your choice. To show you the power of split CLI, developer advocate extraordinaire Tali Nasi is going to give you a quick demo. Thanks, Trevor. Like you said, we created the split CLI to improve the developer experience by simplifying onboarding and making it easy to create, update, and kill your splits. Once we get this live, you'll have a Python command to install the CLI, but for now, I'm just going to run it locally with split CLI. Here, as a first-time user, I can create an account with split or sign in with an existing account if I've used split before. I have a split account, obviously, so I'm going to choose that option. And I will be prompted to enter my email address and my split admin API key, which I can find in the split UI under admin settings. And you can also watch this YouTube video for further instructions. Now that I'm logged in, the fun begins. The split CLI can manage your entire instance, splits, segments, metrics, and everything organizational. Right now, we're going to manage the entire life cycle of a split through the CLI, from testing and production, to our first ramps and measurement, and on to a final decision. The first thing I'm going to do is create a segment, which is just a group of users that I can use to target in my feature flags. From Manage Segments, I'm going to create a new segment and call this Beta Testers. Through the CLI, you can add users one at a time to this user group, or you can do it in bulk by uploading a CSV. This list can start with the development team and expand to QA and even beta customers through the testing process. Back at the main menu, I can now manage splits where I will see a list of all the splits that I have already created, as well as the option to create a new split. So let's go ahead and create a new split. I'll enter a name. And a description. 
Then I have to choose whether I want a simple rollout, which will give me the ability to turn a feature on or off in any environment, or if the feature will have a custom set of treatments. This will be a simple rollout, and we're going straight to production. If I hit show definition, I can see the JSON and right now you can see the treatment is off for 100% of my users. To turn this flag on in production for my beta testers, I'm going to choose target segments, then select the treatment I want to target, so in this case on, and then I add the beta testers segment. Now when I hit show definition, I can see that the treatment is on for my beta testers, but off for everyone else. When any of the beta testers visit the product, they will have access to this new feature, while the rest of my users do not. Once they have gone in and tested the feature in production and it looks good, we can start incrementally rolling this out. To do that, I'm going to select Ramp Split. and enter the percentage of my user base that I will scale this feature to. I'm going to set it to 20 to start. When we look at the definition, I see that the feature is on for 20% of my population and off for 80%. Amazing! Now, let's say Splits Alerting identifies a bug in my feature. Rather than expose more customers, we can turn the release off while my team investigates the issue. I'm going to select Kill, and you can see that the feature has been instantly killed in production. Now we can go figure out what's going on, fix the issue, and when it's ready again, I can go in and hit Restore. My feature is alive and well, and her vitals look great. As my confidence increased in the feature, I have decided to roll this out to 100% and it's now live for everyone. After the rollout is complete, I don't need the old behavior anymore, so I can hit Delete Split. We don't want stale feature flags taking up space in our environments. So in my code, I'm going to remove the if else statement and just hard code the feature. Then I can come in here and delete my split. This is only a fraction of all that the split CLI can do. It's another tool that, that developers can use to build and learn faster. And we're so excited to see what you all do with it. Back to you, Trevor. Thanks, Talia. Not going to lie to all of you, when Talia first showed me this, I was pretty freaking impressed. Then she asked me to offer API access for free, so everyone could utilize these full capabilities. So bottom line, you can now all thank Talia for the new additions to our free tier. To go along with the split CLI, we're also launching a metrics reference library, designed to empower all of you to measure your releases against every metric that's important to your business. Whether you're just getting started or building your 100th metric, this new library is a repository of best practices for measuring any part of your product, providing you everything you need to track, measure, and interpret each metric. And to help you get started, we are also making available an extension for our JavaScript SDK. This extension will automatically capture the events for dozens of the most popular metrics. With Split's metrics library, you have everything you need to start measuring the impact on your customers for metrics like errors, page load performance, rage clicks, and overall satisfaction. As we look at the rest of our roadmap, I wanted to start by recapping the feature delivery lifecycle that Brian walked you through. Each part of this lifecycle is represented in our product direction. We all agree that this lifecycle is how the best in the industry build software. It's become common knowledge that you can separate the deploy from the release, target and roll out to customers, and enrich downstream data solutions. Still, we are all still striving to layer in data to answer the simple question, what happened when I released to 10% of my customers? At Split, we're making investments across the life cycle to make answering that question as easy as asking it. No matter your primary use case, the investments you'll see today are focused on helping you reduce engineering cycle time and mitigate release risk, as well as create an impact-driven culture. Our roadmap is also influenced by the industry trends that inform our product direction. Since founding Split, we've had a front row seat to the changing software delivery landscape. We've seen that every organization is now multilingual. 
and the software tool chain is ever growing. We've also seen that every team now helps ship software and that every software company is a security company. With all these trends, plus the rate of change in our world seeming to increase year over year, we know that all of you need to focus your time and energy on impact. And lastly, our roadmap is grounded in our mission to empower engineering teams to build impactful products. Our role is to provide a platform for feature delivery that supports your use cases and your teams at any scale. Today and tomorrow, you'll hear from a number of split customers who are doing just that. The team from GoDaddy, Jacob, and Marshall are joining to share how they have used experimentation to drive customer engagement and improve the customer experience. Matt at Workfront will share how they transformed their release rituals to match their customer needs. And Chris, Mangan, and Jim from Product Analytics and Data Science team at Comcast will share their product experimentation journey and how they've built their product culture and the technical foundations of success and examples of results they've achieved. I know you're all as stoked as I am to hear these stories, but what you're really here for is the rest of the feature announcements I have for you. So let's do this. These are the investments we're making through the remainder of 2021, which I'd like to drop into three buckets. Features that will reduce engineering cycle times and mitigate release risk, features that we know you need to build an impact-driven culture, and features that enable you to control the entire feature delivery lifecycle. Let's start with efficiency and risk. These are key investments to help teams plan and develop and deploy, target and release, and enrich their existing data solutions. So what does that include? How do new software development and CI-CD integrations, new SDKs and matchers, and reusable targeting components sound? Let's talk about integration partners. It might not come as a surprise to anyone in the audience if you saw our Series C announcement that those partners are Atlassian and Microsoft. Specifically, we're rolling out integrations with both JIRA and Azure DevOps. With Split's new JIRA integration, teams can more effectively release and manage Split feature flags. All team members can stay in the loop about the latest status of a flag and what percentage has been rolled out to customers. Unlike other feature flagging integrations, we're bringing Atlassian context into Split, highlighting important information about your features, including what JIRA issues are associated to each flag, the assignee, and the status of those JIRA issues. With our new Azure DevOps integration, developers can tie the feature flags to Azure work items, giving teams complete control over the feature development and delivery lifecycle. By displaying feature flag contacts on Azure work items, your team can create and manage your feature flags within Azure. In addition, teams can also manage feature flag changes in the context of Azure DevOps release pipelines, configuring feature flags during the deployment process to streamline the initial definition creation. As you can see here, you can easily add a job during the deployment process to configure a split in production to 100% off. Let's talk about SDK coverage. As I mentioned earlier, no customer today is developing in a single language. We get it. At Split, we use React for our front end, Node for BFF, backend for front end, and Java for back end services. Oh, and we're on the Go bandwagon. It's emerging as a second language alongside Java. We're developing support for two new languages, C++ and React Native. React Native provides a modern device experience, allowing developers to build Android and iOS apps using JavaScript. Put simply, React Native allows developers to seamlessly build cross-platform mobile applications. React Native is used by thousands of applications we interact with every day, and today it becomes even more powerful because it can integrate with Split. As you've adopted Split across the client side, many of you have asked us to support C++, given its performance traits. If you're developing in C++, you too will soon be able to use Split. Beyond SDK coverage, we're also announcing support for semantic version matching. This has been one of the most hotly requested features in our backlog. With so many requests, we can't not support it. Soon you will be able to target feature flag definitions based on version. In this example, we're enabling a new feature for users whose app version is greater than or equal to 2.0. Yes, of course, you can still build all the complicated regex targeting conditions you want, or you can just use our semantic version matching. With this announcement, Split now supports 14 SDKs, covering the full stack from server to client side. We continue to maintain a backlog of requested SDKs, 
If there is a language your team needs, please let our customer success team know. Moving beyond development, let's dive in on some upcoming targeting enhancements. As we've worked with our customers to implement Split across their product and engineering teams, one of the things we've seen is that teams often start with many different types of rollout plans. But as customers begin to achieve wide adoption, we inevitably see a convergence down to a smaller set of rollout plans that get reused. We've taken note of this and are giving teams the ability to create templates to save and share for reuse across their rollout plans. Save and reuse templates like those shown here to easily configure a basic on-off switch or enable for internal employees with just one click. We hope that this will drive efficiency and speed up adoption so your teams can get going faster. Next, let's take a look at those investments we're making to help you create an impact-driven culture. These new features will help enrich Split with data from your existing solutions, allowing you to experiment and monitor and learn and decide. They include configurable experiment settings, downloadable experimental results, and an industry-first dimensional analysis. We know you want the ability to build a culture of experimentation, even if your product generates a lower sample size. This isn't just a problem for smaller companies. Some of our largest customers look to experiment on subsets of their population or in parts of their product that are less trafficked. Standard approaches recommend waiting weeks, sometimes even longer, for smaller sample testing, using this time to establish a high degree of confidence in the metrics behind your business decisions. However, you've asked us for more control over the risks that you're willing to take when it comes to decision criteria. Today, we're announcing the finer grain controls you've been requesting. Granular experiment settings are live today and will allow your team to customize the significance threshold, the minimum sample size required, and the review period for each experiment, giving you tighter controls. With these controls, we also wanted to make it easier for each of you to broadcast the impact of your experiments. Sharing experimental results is a best practice for organizations looking to adopt and foster a culture of experimentation. To share results today, many of you are adjusting your browser zooms and taking a screenshot. As a startup ourselves, we appreciate this lo-fi, scrappy approach, but we knew we could do it better for all of you. With our new results sharing functionality, you can easily download your metrics impact data in PDF, CSV, or JSON format for further analysis. Download your results data, share and celebrate your wins, learn from your failures, and drive a culture of impact and experimentation. Let's talk about those two words you just heard me mention, dimensional analysis. Every experimentation team needs to answer four questions for a given release. What are we doing? Why are we doing that? What happened? And why did it happen? We've been ruthlessly focused on helping you answer the first three questions for every release. Now, we want to attack the last piece of the puzzle, helping you understand why a metric changed. Until now, you have had to analyze this data outside of Split, building robust analytics queries or driving into transaction-level data in our partner tools. We can make this simpler for you, removing the time it takes to understand why a metric changed. That's the problem we've carved off to solve this year, and it's not an easy one. Building the technical infrastructure to support near real-time calculations of statistical significance across multiple facets of your customer base is a challenge in accuracy and speed. One our team is solving for you. With these new capabilities, you can analyze a metric change by properties of your customer base. This lets you determine whether this change was driven by users on mobile or on web, or by your free or paid user base. This is a massive enhancement and one that we think you'll utilize with each experiment. Now, let's take a look at those investments we're making to help teams control the entire feature delivery lifecycle. Today, we're announcing security and user management enhancements, a new change management integration with ServiceNow DevOps, and rollout boards and statuses. We've made two significant changes to make Split's platform more secure and more scalable across your organization. First, we're introducing environment scoping for admin API keys. Scope admin API keys down to one or more environments in a workspace. With a scope down admin API key, engineers can automate jobs for their specific needs without needing to worry about accidentally making changes to splits and segments in another environment. Second, with new user and group endpoints in our admin API, engineers can programmatically manage users and groups within your organization. These endpoints will allow companies to automate their user provisioning and deprovisioning process, 
so that ad admins don't need to do the extra work when onboarding or offboarding teammates to ensure compliance. You heard me mention ServiceNow as a participant in our most recent funding round. With that investment, we're moving forward with both an integration and a deeper partnership with the ServiceNow team. One year ago, we were the first to introduce change management and approval flows to the feature delivery category. Today, we're making the approval process simpler for teams. By integrating with ServiceNow DevOps, Split will automatically register change requests for all environments where the integration is configured. This allows teams to manage approvals via ServiceNow's robust policy builder, using all the meta information in the Split change request. With this integration, you can automatically approve rollouts to less than 20% of your user base, or you can require a manual approval for a rollout change affecting more than 50% of your users. ServiceNow fits into our growing ecosystem of integrations, which span monitoring, issue tracking, messaging, analytics, customer data platforms, deployment solutions, warehouses, alerting, and now change management. We recognize the importance of integrating Split into the tools your team is using. In fact, Pato, my co-founder, and Tina, one of Transposit's co-founders, will open tomorrow with a discussion on how modern software development is about using the right tools above everything else. My goal here is to continue to integrate with the tools that work for each of you. So far, we've talked about dimensional analysis, Azure DevOps, templates, and so much more. I hope you're as stoked for these new features as I am, but we're not quite to the end of the list yet. Brian walked you through the feature delivery lifecycle just a little while ago. This lifecycle is our attempt to demonstrate how far the experience of feature delivery has come from the days of a code deploy equaling a feature release. Today's process is more complex. We all know how important speed and efficiency are to modern software development. We've seen a whole new set of steps spring up from our customers from getting a feature deployed to production in a dark state to when the flag for that new feature is fully cleaned up in code. In this case, this added complexity is what allows teams to break the trade-off between releasing quickly and releasing safely. Customers can first test with employees, then run an external beta, then ramp to 10% or 50% before reaching 100% of users. You need the tools you use to mirror the way your team develops and deploys today. To that end, we've been working on another industry first, a rollout board that will allow you to easily understand and manage the statuses that your splits go through. To help walk you through this, I wanted to hand over to my teammate, Kevin Lee, to give a quick demo of this new capability. Thanks, Trevor, and welcome everyone to our new rollout board. We're really pumped about this one because we're excited to see how our customers start answering some really critical questions like, where are my features in that release process? Which features might be ready or safe to release to a few more customers? And of course, which features are released to 100% of our customers and ready to be cleaned up from our code? Now, if we take a look at this rollout board, we're currently filtered in on splits owned by me or any of the teams that I'm a part of. For the splits here, they're filtered down per column from pre-production all the way to 100% released. And within each column, you can see that for a given card, you have a split name and of course, how many days it's been in that status, in this case, four. And I can see that for payment options, that it's currently receiving traffic in dev staging, but not in production yet. Now, as I review this board, the thing that actually catches my eye is that over here in the ramping status uh, for the dashboard revamp split, I can see that's actually been sitting in this status for seven days now and that it's receiving traffic in all environments. I can actually quickly double check and see that it's last received traffic in development about 35 minutes ago. And if I wanna see some more information, I can click on that card and see some extra information about whether or not this split has received any alerts or has any pending changes. So in this case, I can see it doesn't have anything and it's been sitting here for seven days. So it's probably ready to be released to 100% of our customers. I'm gonna go ahead and click here to the targeting rules page and change that rollout plan from 50-50 to 100% on. Now, as I hit save changes here, of course, we'll have the ability to review those changes and put in a title and comment so my teammates know what I'm doing. And down at the bottom now, I can make that change from status of ramping to 100% released. As soon as I hit confirm, that change is gonna go ahead and go through. And if I click back now to the rollout board, we can see that dashboard revamp is now set to zero days in status in the 100% released status. And so now if my manager or any of my teammates want to get a sense of where dashboard revamp is in that release process, they can come here to this rollout board, as well as check in on the status of any of the other splits in my release process. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Trevor. 
Thanks, Kevin. I'm crushing on this new capability and can't wait to see this in our product. That was a lot. Just looking at this slide makes me energized and somewhat anxious. I remember when we first started Split. I thought we'd be done building just a few years. This is a great idea. We know what to build. We've done it before. We only need a few engineers, I said to my co-founders back in 2015. Wow, was I wrong. With thousands of feature requests and over 500 backlog items, we have a lot to build. I'm happy to have been wrong, though. As my old boss used to say, who's got it better than us? Nobody. <laughs> I know I've packed a lot into these 45 minutes, but hopefully this gave you a good understanding of our trajectory and our momentum. If you want to learn more about what we announced today, head over to Slack for a few key links. Thank you for watching. And most importantly, thank you for being on this journey with us. It's because of you that I get to have this much fun building Split. I look forward to seeing all of you in person in the next year. Stay safe and stay healthy.